Okay, what we have is, is we have a Geroder type motor hooked up and we have a plastic housing and we can actually see the elements rotate in, in, and you realize we have fixed input and output. We have a uh, keyway shaft on here so you have to be careful because the motor can put out, the shaft can put out whatever horsepower it needs to turn. So you don't grab a hold of these things. Okay, so let's turn this on. Okay. And, and we can see the, F, the F element rotating around so that the inlet and outlet all have to be commutated uh, relative to this fixed point. So there's actually a, uh, a rotating set of elements in here that are timed with the shaft and the splines inside. And, and then we can see the shaft rotating. In this particular case, we have low flow rate, so we have low RPM. We're probably at 10 RPM or something. Now we're up. We're going to have our we're going to have our worker over here. He's going to open up the aeration valve, and we're going to put air in here. We need more air. Okay. Okay. It's starting to slow down, but if we can come in here and get a picture of the bubbles, you can hear the noise now. Okay, and if you get air in the system, you can see the bubbles, okay? And now we see the bubbles, can we give more air? Give a little more air. Yeah, the efficiency is dropping off, so we have more bubbles, okay? Okay, now if this was a pump collapsing, it would create cavitation. And it could happen on this device too. That gives you a little demonstration of a look into a uh, hydraulic motor.